Now that we've got a model, um, DEM, um, and LiDAR data, we can start using InfoWorks. It's important to remember you can't really use InfoWorks effectively without elevation data. The, there's a ways to model 3D data with vectors, with elevation and that kind of thing, but uh, nothing beats a 3D model uh, for accuracy and visual uh, fidelity. So let's keep that in mind. Now that we've got a raster digital elevation model, we're free to create a new uh, model for InfraWorks. Okay, so we're going to create Alex, uh, AU number six, <clears throat> and we're going to define the model extents. There are a number of different ways to do this. One convenient way is to just load it from the uh, digital elevation model or another file um, so that you've got the extents created right from the beginning and then everything else can be clipped to fit in those extents and uh, it'll make your life much easier down the road. Um, it knew the coordinate systems of that digital elevation model because we put them on there. So it was able to use that digital elevation model to set the extents. Okay. All right, so now when InfraWorks starts up, uh, you get a kind of empty project window to start with, and you have the ability to add uh, various different data sources to it. So let's start, of course, by adding our digital elevation model. Um, the model comes in what's known as uh, configured. That's because a raster digital elevation model has really only one purpose. It's only classified as a single thing, and it's obvious it's terrain. Uh, the coordinate system is set on this model. Some raster files may not have a coordinate system set, and we'll see an example of that in a moment. Um, but this one is fine, and let's close and refresh, and we'll get the model displayed. You'll notice that it uses a quad tree to scale the imagery and render it at the appropriate size. And it's doing this in a parallelized way, so um, it's actually considerably faster than <coughs> it might be. It really does take advantage of your CPU uh, as much as it can. And there we go. There's our DEM. Uh, the one we created. You'll see there's quite a bit of noise in there from the trees. It'll look that great at this size, but there's a reason for this. Um, we're going to use the elevations in this raw, complete data set to uh, try to fix some building heights that we don't actually happen to have. Um, so it's going to turn out to be very useful for that and for checking pole heights uh, and uh, so on. So we made the two different files for a reason, and we're going to start with this one <clears throat> for its level of detail to get our model right in the first place, and then we're going to sort of simplify it as we go.